How's it going YouTube? Welcome back to your favorite aviation channel and today we are here with a very special update for Chicago O'Hare International Airport Terminal 5. If you've seen the previous update for December 2023 then you do know that we have a new mat set up for this diorama. In that video I also did promise that by the next update which is this video I would have the mat basically complete if not totally complete to showcase to you all. So here we are one month later, uh, first update of 2024, and I'm excited to announce that even though the mat is not 100% complete, it's very close to being done, and I'm super excited to showcase it to you all today. Uh, today's update is set at around 3 to 4 p.m., so of course the main international arrivals and departures rush at Terminal 5. Got quite a lot of interesting stuff to cover, so without any further delay, let's go ahead and get started. All right, so first we're gonna start off with a brief setup tour to showcase the new mat. If you're interested in how I designed this entire new mat, how I did everything, the entire process of it, uh, check out the card at the end of this video. It'll take you to my second channel where you can watch the full video how I you know, did everything for this new mat if you're curious at all. It's not meant to be a how-to video, just kind of meant to document the entire process that I did to, well, most of the process of how I designed this whole new uh, set up here. So again, it's not completely done. I'll showcase what parts still need to be worked on, but for the most part it is basically complete. So my favorite part of this new mat would definitely be the new expansion as you can see here. Um, so we actually have proper markings now because Google Maps actually updated the satellite imagery for O'Hare uh, last or earlier, or was it earlier this month? Yeah, earlier this month Google Maps updated the satellite imagery for Terminal 5. So finally I had a reference to put all the proper you know apron markings and all that stuff down so that was a big clutch move by Google I was really happy that they did that um, because I could actually reference that to design the new mat it was like literally perfect timing so uh, here's gate M40 got the Swiss A330-300 here um, so M40 has a lot of these gates as, you, as you'll see they have a they have various you know stand configurations um, M39 and M40 are, it's kind of weird here as you can see there's like a whole maze of lines M39 goes up to here which I haven't drawn it out yet um, and then M39's wide body stand is right here and then M38 as you can see so similarly M40's got two the standard narrow body stand going that way and the, the wide body which is upside down but here the wide body uh, it, that's what the W stands for obviously M40W means M40's W stand so that would ideally be right here where the 330 is that I didn't draw out yet so that those kind of minor things still need to be added um, another thing that I'm really happy about is these little protruding structures here if you look at the expansion in real life it does have something similar to this uh, to these things I guess they kind of aid with they have a little, I don't need, I don't exactly know what they're for basically but they do kind of stick out from the terminal building like this and this is a bit too far so I should fix that but um, yeah so it looks basically something like this they have both jetways sticking out and then you know ideally the corridor down to the customs hall the hallway on the lower level of the building is somewhere around here so that's what those are there are I believe four of these so I have one here one here and then I think there's there's one more right here where M28 and 29 are. I ran out of Legos for that. And I also ran out of specific tiles for this one. That's why it's all black when this one is black and gray. So, minor things. Um, and then moving along here, I still have to add, of course, the specific lines. A bunch of the taxiway lines for the extra stand markings I haven't added yet, but would hope to do so eventually. Um, and then moving on down here, you can see the taxiways as well. There are, like, you know, specific, I forgot what they're called, like the whole short. Um, boundaries here for every single one of these I believe um, especially back here um, I haven't added those yet those I have to do as soon as possible and then this whole area that's all gray there is a lot of it's basically grass and a little bit more of like GSE storage so I gotta fix that as well by the next update or sometime soon uh, moving down here as you can see more grass all that good stuff and then the new Delta well not the well I keep saying Delta section but technically it is the Delta section M M11 through M M2, um, that's all done here, and um, yes, that part right there is actually all concrete. It doesn't have any grass, which is kind of interesting. That's why it looks a bit different. And then, if you're wondering why the Emirates A380 is there, they'll, you, we'll get to that point when we get to that point. 
Um, and then another thing to add is, of course, this little connector point between the two roadways that looks a bit awkward. And there's another roadway that comes out this way that I have to put in later. Um, so this, actually, this setup was actually the hardest part of the whole thing. This part between, from M14 to M17, this part was insane because I had to redo it at least two or three times because I kept messing up the angles of the of the apron foils. So this is actually kind of inaccurate because if you look at O'Hare in real life, there is no, you see how there's a bend in the road there? It's actually, that's actually not supposed to be there. Um, even right here, all these gates are in one line. So M, where is it? Like M32 all the way down to M17. It's, they're all in one line. They're not staggered like I put it here. So that's pretty much thanks to the building that I have here, the main part of T5. I think it was a bit inaccurate when I built it, so that kind of messed up the proportions. That's why these two are a bit staggered when they shouldn't be. And then similarly, these are, I think, well, this should actually be in line with this. So M16 should be more in line with M17. So it shouldn't be staggered, as you can see there. So that, that kind of messed it up a little bit. But it doesn't look, that, I mean, I was able to salvage it. It looks pretty cool, you know, going like that. Um, and the end product, I mean, I'm really happy with how it turned out, to be honest. Uh, it could have been better, obviously, it could have been more realistic, but the way it looks right now, I, I think it's, it's, it's fine. So, yeah, so that was basically it. Another, you, you might notice there's a bunch of extra gray space along the side here, and especially back here, it's pretty bad. There's so much gray, like, open space. So, a big aspiration of mine is to probably see if I can add the ATS line, the O'Hare train, that comes right along here and then it goes of course underground uh, in, inside T5 and then it comes out back this way. That would be pretty cool but figuring out how to get the trains and to add the, the tracks and everything that's a big project. Um, otherwise I kind of have to figure out what to do with this but I might add the roads like the drop off zone and all that even though it's not really it would be kind of kind of weird to put that there but we'll, we'll see what we can do with that eventually. Um, Again, same same case here, but there's really nothing here in real life. Uh, but then at the end of the day, the main point of concern is, of course, the aircraft and the airport itself, not what is on the outside of the, on the land side of the terminal. So, yeah, but that's basically it. Oh, before I forget, this was also, I didn't think I would add this part, but I did. So, of course, T5 has a bunch of remote stands back here. Um, I didn't have space for the whole thing. That's why it kind of gets cut off here. A couple of them, of course, I got the full parts because they are angled this way so I could get the whole uh, you know the whole markings in there but everything else I had to cut off because I didn't have enough space but this is where a bunch of planes would be set overnight or in, on their long layovers a bunch of times you'd see some of the Middle Eastern Airlines back in like 2022 for example you'd see some of them get put over here um, during their long layovers and then I was actually just at O'Hare this past weekend or actually this video is coming out on the 29th or something. So the weekend before this past weekend, I was at O'Hare for a quick little spotting trip with some of my friends. Um, so I was able to see, I think they had a Spirit A320 over here and then they had Contour as well. Contours, their little regional jets, uh, Contour parks them here sometimes. So maybe I'll put them in a future update right here. That'd be really, really cool to finally put a plane here. Uh, but I'll talk more about that spotting trip at the end of the video. It was a lot of cool stuff to see. Uh, a lot of talking right now. Sorry about that. Let's actually get into the aircraft themselves. We have a uh, one new airline. Finally, you kind of see Air New Zealand is finally here. So we'll cover that when we cover that. But let's get started with the aircraft themselves. So we're going to start off with uh, the Delta side first. All right, so we're going to get started over here with gate M4 with this Delta Connection Embraer 175. Just came in from Boston as flight 5674. I'll be headed back out to Boston with that same flight number. Uh, so really quickly, let me show you all the, the apron here. So like I mentioned earlier with Google Maps, finally updating their satellite imagery. This was super clutch once again. Um, so I was finally able to give you all the best or the most realistic kind of look at what the Delta side looks like with respect to like how all the 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 lines are. I I don't know what the specific name for the the lines are, but um, I was finally able to get a good look at what they actually look like because I was always guessing before. There's a bunch of weird configurations here. I also have to. I forgot to add. I got to finish this roadway. Add the other uh, gate numbers for the other two gates here. Other three, I should say. Uh, and there is actually a gate M1. It's actually not an act. It's not an actual like jet bridge gate, 
but M1 is just kind of out here. It's where Cape Air parks their planes, I think, like little Technum, uh, little prop planes, they park them over there sometimes. So M1 does exist. It was a big mystery, but it's just not connected to the actual like terminal itself. So it's back here. I, I won't be able to ever showcase it, but it, do, it does exist. So just thought I'd make that clear. So yeah, that's just a little overview of the Delta side. Forgot to cover that uh, earlier in the video. Um, so yeah, let's continue on with uh, M. M6, look at that, M6, it'll make it a lot easier because sometimes I forget which gate we're at. So now that I have these on the apron, it'll make it a lot easier. So this Delta A220-300 came in from New York LaGuardia as flight 1013. It'll head back out to LaGuardia with that same flight number. And pushing back, we have a 757-200 uh, going back to Atlanta as flight 1038. Um, we've, getting, we've, we've been getting a bunch more 737-900 ERs lately from Atlanta, um, but I believe it's a bit more temporary because the 757s will still be sticking at O'Hare through the rest of the year, I guess. We'll get like five, six, seven, five, sevens a day from Atlanta. Um, so at the moment, I, I don't know why we're getting like two or three seven three nines a day in place of 757s, but it's a temporary thing. We're going to keep the 757s for as long as I can tell through 2024, which is pretty cool. Alright, moving on to M10, <laughs> Delta A220, this is a 100. Uh, this came in from uh, Detroit as flight 1082. We headed out to Minneapolis-St. Paul as flight 2843. And then this one's got the opposite routing, uh, this A220 at M11, yeah, M11, sorry. Uh, this came in from Minneapolis as flight 1526, and this one's going to go out to Detroit as flight 2871. And I didn't know this before, but M10, sorry, 11, it has a wide body stand, uh, which I didn't know before. So I guess that's in the unlikely event that Delta starts flying regular wide bodies to O'Hare, which, or if they bring international service to O'Hare, like they once had from Paris um, seasonally, because Air France would do it during the summer and fall, and then Delta would take it over for the winter and spring with the 767. That was back in the day, though, uh, like until 2015 or something like that. But um, there is a wide body stand here for, for Delta at their gates, which is inter interesting. So we'll see what happens if Delta brings any wide bodies in the future. Highly doubt it, though. Uh, so yeah, moving on to M14, though, we got the Air France A350. I'm glad that they brought the A350 back, because the past couple of months it was a 777. And it was really annoying me because I don't have the 777, but thankfully they brought the A350 back. Uh, so this 350-900 is here from Paris, Charles de Gaulle, as uh, Flight 136 headed back out as Flight 137, but it's got about two or three hours before its return. Uh, but yeah, as you can probably tell, Air France is quite in inconsistent with their with their planes here. Sometimes it'll be a 222, 333, 789, A350. I, I hope they keep the 350 here because I don't want to buy the 787 or 777. It's, a nightmare. Anyway, moving on to M15, we have United 767-300, which has just come in from London Heathrow as flight 928. And then we got the KLM 787-10 at M16, just came in from Amsterdam as flight 611. Um, that's, yeah, KLM's sticking with 7810. They're usually really consistent about it. Um, before, like 2022, they would change it a lot. They would bring the 777 in sometimes. 789 or 7810, but lately it's been mainly 7810 for KLM, so nice to see that one. Alright, so moving on to the famous gate M17, we have the Emirates Airbus A380-800. This is not supposed to be here, obviously. O'Hare doesn't get the A380 from Emirates, and we don't even get the 380 from British Airways anymore, and we're probably not going to get an A380 on regular service for quite some time because British Airways is, well, well, we'll talk about British Airways later, but long story short, BA is not going to send us the 384 anytime soon, and Emirates as well. So why this is here? Well, back in December, so last month, I didn't cover this in the previous update because I wanted to save it for later, um, but basically back in December, uh, Emirates Flight 211, which goes from Dubai to Houston, they it diverted to O'Hare on one particular day. I forgot which, which day it was, but uh, it diverted to O'Hare, I believe, is a medical emergency. Um, so it came in. They docked it at M17, of course, because this is the only A3. Well, not the only, but it's the main A380 gate because it's got the upper deck jetway there. Um, so it was here for about two hours, I think, Emirates, this, this aircraft. And then it departed back for Houston, uh, onwards to Houston at around 5.30 or something like that. So really unique. Emirates hasn't sent O'Hare an A380 since 2015. That was an infamous day because... Uh, it was a scheduled flight, Emirates A380 flight. It was a one-off. 
um, but it's infamous because Emirates sent it that day to test out you know, A380 service at O'Hare. And it was funny because the jetway ended up damaging the plane. It scratched like the door or something. And so Emirates was like, yeah, we're not giving you guys the 380 anymore. So that kind of ruined it for us. I don't think, I think because of that, Emirates will probably never give us a 380 anytime soon. But this was a random visit, of course. And it was really cool to see it. I was, I didn't see it myself, but it was cool to see the Emirates uh, 380 diverted to O'Hare. So I had to include it. Um, you know, of course I had to include it. It's pretty cool to, to see that. So there we go, Emirates 380, and we have the Emirates regular flight, the 777. You'll see that later in the video. So two Emirates aircraft in one video, probably not going to happen anytime soon um, going forward, but definitely a cool kind of scene we got here. All right, next at gate M18, we have the British Airways 777-300ER. Just came in from London Heathrow as flight uh, 295. They head back out to Heathrow as flight 294. Uh, BA is giving us mostly triple seven. It's yeah, pretty much all triple seven two hundred ERs now. Um, occasionally they will send the triple three in, which is why I have it here. But most of the time, both of their daily flights are now triple seven two hundred ERs. Um, the GE ninety ones, not even the Rolls Royce ones. So I don't, I don't, I don't even have that specific aircraft type. I have the Rolls Royce triple two, but we'll see if I can add add one of those in the future. We'll see about that. But as I was hinting at earlier when I was talking about the Emirates three eighty. Um, BA is not going to give us any A380s anytime soon because they are reportedly adding a third daily flight to Chicago, 299 and 298, which is going to be on the 787 I don't know when that's going to start. I totally forgot. I think like May or something. But basically, because they're adding the third daily flight, that basically negates the point of giving us a 380. So... Yeah, um, I don't know why they're doing this to us. I don't know why we're getting deprived of the Airbus A380. Not that it really matters. I mean, it'd be nice to have the 380, of course, because we don't get anything else with regards to the Airbus A380. Um, but it is what it is. So BA will give us their two daily flights, like they have right now, 295, 290, 294, and then 297, 296, and then the new flight, 299, 298. So what I've heard is that It'll be a mix of 777 and 787 on those flights. I think the first two will remain as 777-200s and 300 ERs. And then the new flight will probably just be 787-10s or 787-9s. So that's what's going on with BA nowadays. Uh, rumor has it that I think, no, they are going to move to Terminal 3 departures. Uh, for the departures, they're going to remove, they will move, I can't talk. They're going to move to Terminal 3 in May is what I've heard. Um, that's the rumor right now. More on Terminal 3 coming soon, um, in a few moments, but what I've heard is that British Airways is looking to move their departures out of Terminal 3, because that's where American, of course, that's their terminal, so BA is looking to move their departures out of there, which would make a lot of sense, honestly. Um, so I'm excited to see that, because uh, they'll be joining Japan Airlines, Iberia, in terms of international carriers, and then one more international airline that we'll talk about in a few moments. But yeah, so BA will have their arrivals in Terminal 5, and then starting from May, they'll move the departures out to Terminal 3. So the plane will get towed to Terminal 3 for the departures. So that's what BA, that's the news regarding BA4 for, for now. All right, moving on to gate M20, we have the United Boeing 787-10. This came in from Frankfurt as flight 906. And it's just finishing off the cleaning and offloading process. It's soon gonna get pushed back and towed over to Terminal 1 for its next departure. And next at gate M21, we have another 787-10. This aircraft just came in from Tokyo Haneda as flight 882, and it's just getting offloaded and cleaned before it gets sent back to Terminal 1 for its next departure. All right, moving on to gate M24. Would you believe it? This might actually be one of the last times that you see Aer Lingus in one of these videos. Not because Aer Lingus is leaving O'Hare, absolutely not. Basically, Aer Lingus is moving their entire operation at O'Hare to Terminal 3, effective today, January 23rd. Uh, that's when I'm filming, or sorry, this, today's 24th. I'm filming this video on the 24th. You're going to be watching it on the 29th, most likely. So Aer Lingus, effective from today, they are moving to Terminal 3 for both arrivals and departures. You're probably wondering why are they arriving to Terminal 3 as well, because it's an international airline. Well, basically, um, of course, Aer Lingus flies from Dublin. And Dublin is one of three, three airports, I think, sir, no, sorry, not three, there's a lot of other airports, but Dublin is, the point here is Dublin has a U.S. pre-clearance facility. Basically, that means passengers that are departing from Dublin, coming to the U.S., they go through customs and immigration in Dublin, 
before they get on the plane. So basically, once they get on the plane, they've basically entered the U.S. unofficially because they've been stamped in, all that good stuff. So once they land back in the U.S., they basically get off the aircraft as if they were coming off a domestic flight. So Etihad Airways does that as well from Abu Dhabi because Abu Dhabi has a pre-clearance facility. Uh, Shannon, Ireland also has a pre-clearance facility. So when United does that route seasonally, you know, that flight arrives into Terminal 1 instead of Terminal 5. Same case with Dublin for United and Aer Lingus. Um, well, for, for United, it goes in term, into Terminal 1. For American, it goes into Terminal 3 directly because, you know, everybody's pre-cleared. Um, so Aer Lingus, it kind of didn't make sense because if everybody's pre-cleared, then why does Aer Lingus come into the international terminal? Because they don't really have any point because the passengers don't even use the customs hall anyway. So that's why Aer Lingus is moving to Terminal 3. They are a partner with American Airlines, despite not being in One World themselves. Maybe they'll join sometime soon, but... Because of that, I guess to make operations easier, they're going to move to Terminal 3 from today. Um, and so that means I don't have any point in putting Aer Lingus in these videos because they won't be at Terminal 5 anymore. So the only time you'll probably see Aer Lingus is if I put them on the taxiway back here somewhere or back there. So it's crazy. Never thought Aer Lingus would actually move to Terminal 3 because, you know, they're not a one world airline. So I didn't really imagine that they'd make this move. But it, it makes a lot of sense from an operational standpoint. So it's, it's good for them, honestly. So yeah, this is probably going to be the last time you'll see him. It's definitely the last time you'll see him at the terminal, that's for sure. So enjoy this while you can. It's Aer Lingus 123 from Dublin, and will soon be pushing back for its... Well, yeah, it'll soon be pushing back for Dublin, its return as flight 122. And I believe nowadays they've changed the schedule, so this flight, I think, comes in at like 5 p.m., but it doesn't matter. You're not going to see them anytime anytime soon. In future videos. All right, moving on at gate M25, and I just realized this plane is parked at the wide body stand. My fault. Um, but this United 737-900 ER uh, just landed from Cancun as flight 1196, just getting its bags off, and passengers are coming off the aircraft. United also, I'm not too sure if they if they ended this, but they had last time I checked, they had a 777 that does the Cancun route as well. Uh, one of the domestic configured ones. It comes in at like 6 p.m. So in a future video, if they're still operating that, I'd love to showcase that because it's been a long time since I put a United 777 at Terminal 5. I mean, you've seen it on the taxiways and stuff, but it's been a while since I've put a 222 at uh, the terminal. So maybe in a future video, you'll see that. But for now, um, this 739 just came from Cancun. Moving on to gate M26, we have the Southwest Boeing 737-700 in the Missouri 1 livery. In my collection video a few weeks ago, I called this by mistake Tennessee One. I believe I was so tired that video, so that's why I made that mistake. But Missouri One, uh, this aircraft came in, let's see, it came from Phoenix as flight 2962, making service out to Baltimore as flight 667. And fun fact, when I was at O'Hare uh, this past weekend, not from when you're watching this, but from when I'm filming this, I went to O'Hare on, I think, the 20. I think it was the 21st or something, but I saw this aircraft uh, departing Missouri 1. So stay tuned for that video when it comes out because you're not going to see just Missouri 1. You're going to see a lot of cool planes in that video. I can't wait to showcase it to you all. So, yeah, and then pushing back right here, we have another special livery, the beautiful Southwest Max 8 in the Amua 1 colors. Uh, this aircraft, let me double check here, is going off to uh, Dallas Love Field as flight 1779 and came in from Orlando as flight 1205. Moving on to gate M29, we have the TAP Portugal Airbus A330 900 NEO. Just pulled into the gate from Lisbon as flight 243. They have changed their schedule now, so instead of arriving at like 7.45, 8 p.m. like they used to, um, like last year for example, uh, now they're coming in around 3.45, 4 p.m., which is good if you want to catch these guys in daytime. Uh, you know, you have a better chance now because now they're arriving earlier in the day and their departure is now 7.15, I believe. So they have a decent layover here in O'Hare. Um, but yeah, tap Portugal from Lisbon. And uh, that's all I have to say about that. And next up, gate M30, we have Air New Zealand finally making its debut in these updates. The Boeing 7879 just came in from Auckland as flight 26. We headed back out to Auckland as flight 27 in about two or three hours. So now that we have Air New Zealand finally, we're only missing three airlines uh, that serve Terminal 5, which is really cool to say, because uh, about a year ago when I was just starting this with uh, this, um, this airport update series, we had quite a couple airlines to add, but now we're here. Uh, Air New Zealand is finally added, and so at this point we're missing 
Viva Aerobus from Mexico, Austrian Airlines, and Air Serbia. And then eventually in April, um, ETA Airways from Italy. They're going to be starting service, so I'll be sure to add them once they uh, start service, obviously. But Austrian, I hope to add them within the next month. So maybe by next update or by March, you'll see Austrian finally. Um, but Viva Airbus and Air Serbia, they are literally impossible to find models of those airlines. So it'll be a while before you see those. But Air New Zealand finally here. They fly four times a week from Auckland. I believe it's about 15 or so hours, uh, 15, 16 hours coming into O'Hare. But the flight back to Auckland, I believe, is a lot shorter. It's like 12, 13 or so hours. So I did see them when I was at O'Hare recently. I didn't get to film them arriving, which really hurt because I one of my main catches that day, goals that day, was to catch Air New Zealand uh, because they only fly four times a week. Um, but because I was with friends, they had some errands to do, so we ended up missing Air New Zealand. But I did see them parked at uh, M34, right, at this gate. So, yeah, but I have seen them before uh, at O'Hare, but that was my first time getting a nice look at Air New Zealand in Chicago. Really, really cool to see. And it's absolutely mad to think that we have a nonstop flight all the way to Oceania, that whole region there. So hopefully soon Qantas, because Qantas was actually supposed to start flying from Brisbane in 2020, of course that never happened. Um, but they are reevalu, <clears throat> but they are reevalu, but they are reevaluating that route. So maybe we will, we will see Qantas coming to O'Hare within the next year or so. That'd be really cool to see Qantas here alongside Air New Zealand. But yeah, Air New Zealand, welcome. Really happy to have them, and I hope you're excited to see them here as well. All right, moving on, pushing back from gate M32, we have the Southwest Boeing 737-700. Going off to Austin as flight 2847 and came in from there as well as flight 1329. At gate M34, we've got the Qatar Airways Boeing 777-300ER in the retro livery. Uh, had to put this aircraft in to celebrate the new mat and stuff like that, you know what I mean? But this aircraft just came in from Doha as flight 725 and uh, came in a bit late. Yeah, from Doha, whatever, doesn't matter. Uh, it's here from Doha as flight 725 and head back out to Doha in about 3-4 hours as flight 726. At M35, we have the regularly scheduled Emirates flight to O'Hare, flight 235 from Dubai just came in and is getting offloaded, serviced, all that good stuff. It'll be headed back out to Dubai around 8.15 p.m. Uh, and that's about, yeah, three to four hour layover in between flights. At M37, we've got the Royal Jordanian Boeing 787-8, uh, came in from Amman as flight 263. And we headed back out to Amman as flight 264 in another two to three hours. Over here at gate M39, we've got the American Airlines Boeing 787-9 just pulled in from London Heathrow, as well, not just pulled in, but came in earlier from London Heathrow as flight 91. And as you can see, it's getting all that service, and all that good stuff. So American, not a big surprise there. International network from O'Hare during the winter months especially is really small. It's like almost non-existent because they, aside from the two flights a day they have to London or something like that, uh, they have basically no other long haul flights. They don't have Paris anymore because uh, I think Paris ended for the season earlier this month and then all the other European flights are seasonal. Uh, they don't have any flights to Asia or South America and of course they have all the narrow body flights to the Caribbean and Me Mexico all that good stuff but they don't have any long haul flying from O'Hare aside from London during the winter months. So yeah it's pretty crazy how little they have from O'Hare considering it is a decently large hub for them um, but yeah during the winter and spring you don't really see a, a lot of American wide bodies at least uh, well there is one I think right now that comes from Dallas for 7879 service to and from Dallas once a day but long haul flying wise yeah American is really really small with that during the winter months at Chicago and last but not least to finish off the update we have the Swiss Airbus A330 300 at M40 this aircraft has arrived from Zurich as flight number, is it 9? I, I really hope it's flight 9, or, or flight 8. Again, I always get these flight numbers mixed up. But here, one of those flight numbers, it's here from Zurich, and uh, it's just getting serviced after arrival. When I was at O'Hare this past weekend, I did see Swiss parked at M40. You can see the picture here, and so that's why I have this aircraft at this particular gate. Because uh, I love recreating stuff I've seen in real life, as you probably know. So, there we go, Swiss, and that concludes the update. So let's talk a bit more before we finish the video, but aircraft-wise, we're done.
All right, so news topics wise, I don't have much else to talk about because I already covered Aer Lingus and British Airways moving to Terminal 3 and then also the Emirates A380 back there. Um, I really hope you enjoyed this video with the new mat and everything. Let me know what you think of it. Uh, again, there are a couple of inaccuracies like I covered earlier in the video with this mat, but overall I'm really, really happy with how it turned out. It didn't take me that long, to be honest. I mean, it did take a couple of days total, but that's just because I, I wanted to take breaks in between, you know, doing all these, uh, all the updates to it and everything like that. But, you know, it's uh, it took a lot less time than I thought it would. And of course, I still have a couple more things to add, as you can see, like we covered earlier in the video. But uh, let me know what you think of it. Uh, it's, it's definitely a big contrast to what we had before with the cardboard and stuff. It just, this just looks a lot more professional and a lot more like a proper model airport so again I really hope that this is a nice upgrade for you all I hope you enjoyed um, this unveiling and you know I'm really looking forward to keeping this going for as long as I can in the months and years to come so yeah future videos of course from following this video of course I have one more trip report from when I went to New York this past winter break so that should hopefully be coming out Wednesday and then the O'Hare spotting video will be coming after that. It's going to be a pretty long video, I think. I don't know how much footage I got, but I can anticipate it probably being like 35, 40 minutes of footage. So I might end up breaking it up into two parts, but a lot of great stuff, honestly. Like Even though I did miss, unfortunately, I missed arriving. I missed capturing the Qatar, Emirates, Royal Jordanian, Swiss, Air New Zealand, TAP, Portugal. I missed all those flights arriving, sadly. Um, if I was alone, I definitely would have caught them, but because I was traveling, I was there with friends who had some errands to do, uh, we didn't get to spot all those flights, unfortunately. Um, but I, I did get the Lufthansa, I did get the Lufthansa A340-600, um, KLM78710, Iberia, a bunch of, Air India was a big one that I caught as well, I was, I've been wanting to get some proper footage of Air India for a while. Um, and of course, United A321neo, Southwest Missouri 1. A lot, a lot of great stuff, honestly. I can't wait to, to showcase that video to you all coming soon. So that's it for today. If I miss any news, let me know because I honestly, there's been a lot of like winter mishaps at O'Hare that I'm not going to talk about right now. When I was flying back into O'Hare from New York on my trip back from New York, uh, there was a lot of just, it was just a mess at O'Hare. So I'll be sure to cover that in the next video because this video is getting a bit too long but otherwise i hope you enjoyed this video leave a like if you enjoyed subscribe if you're new but until next time take care everybody stay safe and uh, i'll see you next time goodbye